Sure. So I'm Dan McNeish. I'm an assistant professor of quantitative psychology here at Arizona State. Uh, I research statistical methods uh, for uh, messy data structures, usually clustered data where people are in organizations or longitudinal data where you follow the same people repeatedly over time. Going a little bit of the history of it is so my co-author Dennis Dumont is, knows a lot about the history of psychometrics and he's deep in that literature and found that uh, papers going back to like 1909 before World War I are talking about how do we get at learning capacity, so how much people might be able to learn at some point in the future. And uh, that was a really hard problem to solve 100 years ago before computers, before the advent of a lot of statistical methods. And so people kind of punted that problem away and focused on an easier problem of how do I measure what people know right now rather than what they might know in the future. And so a lot of the testing history developed from that idea of uh, you see a lot of high stakes tests, they're given once, you know, what do you know right now, and then people, um, the test companies kind of recommend against extrapolating forward, but people sometimes ignore that and extrapolate forward from those tests and saying, based on this score, what might you know in the future? And so uh, we had kind of gone through, developed a, a model to say, if you're trying to predict or get after some sort of future behavior, uh, there's a model that goes along with that, rather than trying to just take a single test score and extrapolate it forward. And so the nice thing is with, uh, you know, there's a lot of complaints about all the tests that kids have to take, and I certainly sympathize with all of those complaints, but as a statistician, the nice thing is there's a lot of data to work with. And so uh, our idea was kind of, if there's all this data that exists, all these kids have all these measurements over time, why don't we use all of the measurements rather than just using one at the end, which is really the one people are focusing on. Um, and so this study, uh, Kevin Grimm, who's a co-author, uh, had a data set that followed people from age 3 to 70. And the nice thing about that is you actually see where people end up in the future. So we fit, we took a small portion of the data from age 3 to 20, fit the model to it and said, kind of to mimic that SAT, ACT example where people take a test at late adolescence, and then that's kind of used to predict forward in a lot of cases. So, what does the model predict just from the data up to age 20? And we kind of hid the actual scores from the model and then tried to see how close our model would get to the scores that uh, people actually got later on in life. And then compared that to the single test score method where if I say, at age 20, how did you score? And then if you just carry that forward. And uh, the dynamic measurement perspective that we had uh, formulated uh, gave predictions that were three times better than the existing method. So it seems that if you're, you know, if you are after, you know, how much do you know right now? We have lots of methods for that. But if you're after a, a different question of prediction or how much might somebody know in the future, we can do a lot better uh, with maybe some new methods that are now available as computers are getting better. Um, that gives you better predictions than the current system that's being implemented.